morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for the delay, but uh, in Spain we, we we have a bad habit, which is arrive late. So uh, today today was normal day. The logistics didn't work. So uh, thank you for the introduction. You know, one day many years ago, I would, Arantxa was my sister. You know, they introduced her as my sister, but since she passed me like this, like a rocket on the results, and then I become her brother. So I'm very, very honored to be presented like that. And um, I want to thank uh, USPTA and, and, um, and, uh, and the region for this opportunity. Uh, for me, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today to try to, to share some of, some of my knowledge and some of the experience with you guys. And uh, I've been with Bo in, earlier in the year in his small small area and, and, and I had a very familiar and, and, and warm welcome and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward for this for this day today and hopefully we, we, we enjoy the day. <clears throat> I'm, I'm here to, to talk about, about uh, Spanish tennis. I, I come from Spain and, uh, and, and also American tennis because I live here for the past five years. I, I live in Naples eh, and uh, we have a, a second operation from our academies, eh, where we share the tennis with the, with, the, with the middle and high school, so with the studies, and we try to make these players have more opportunities eh, in, in tennis and, and education. And um, normally, when we started this, this, this venture 20 years ago in Barcelona, eh, we started and we had an incredible group of players, and we, we, we tend to have we tend to academies, competition academies. Normally, we are in the middle, in the middle of the of the pyramid, of the pyramid of development. And um, but we, what we realize is that when you are working with super top players, uh, there is not so many around. So the academies, when you have these big structures like us, uh, we need to start to go a bit down. So we need to start to work a bit more on the on the other stages of the pyramid. And what we realized also is that um, was not only to work with the players, because we were um, all coming from the competition side, but we had to start also to work with the coaches and to work with the people that is in the industry. So uh, from the first moment, we, we started to put together what we call our system. And we start to share our system. To, to everyone. Or originally back in Spain, we start to do some courses for coaches, and, and uh, those coaches that they start to do well, they stay to, to work with us. And then those coaches, they develop themselves more in the, in the competition side, okay? from here to top. But the clients, they are lower. And, and, and so, so for us, it was, was a big shock because because uh, how we could do what we do well, which is the competition, but if there is not enough players. So then we, did, we started to, to work much more on this stream and then on the, on the lower one. And then we had to adapt our system to work towards the bottom instead of more towards the top. And many people uh, that are in the industry, uh, they work on, this, on these streams here on the bottom. Uh, and, but we, we have coaches that they have the dream to make it to the tour. How many of you here work on, 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 let's say, on the bottom, on initiation tennis? And how many work on formation or on, on advanced tennis with competition? How many work in transition or in elite? How many work here in elite? Not so many, because it's very very difficult and it's very few spots available to go to go up there. So so we try to in, in our mindset so we try to develop the coach pathway but as well at the player at the same time that we develop the player pathway. And uh, so this for us this this this, this pyramid become really really important. Eh? These two phases that's where the money is. That's where we are all and that's where we all that's our industry. That's where we have the numbers. Once we start to go up, and then here starts the struggle. And that's why I put here the already performance stage, and that's where the academies are. Let's say the academies who want to develop players. And then on the other ones, that's, that's, those are the, that's the toughest one. This one here is the, is the most difficult one. 
and then the elite is very, very selective. Okay? Because I always say elite for us is the top 100 in the world. Top 100 ATP or top 100 WTA. Okay? But how many, how many spots do you think they are up there per year? How many? How, many, how much rotation there is in the top 100? 20 or 30. 20 or 30. Five, six is the average for the last 10 years. So all the clubs, all the clubs of competition, all the academies, all the federation, all the private coaches, all the super whatever groups, we all work to put, to take one of the spots up there. Which means that for coaches, there is also five or six spots on because the 100 players that they are there, they have coaches. So there's not many jobs available in the top of the... So there's not many spots to go to Roland Garros <laughs> to coach. So to arrive there, you have to develop yourself to be able to be the best version of yourself continuously that someone that is your student or someone that sees you work very well calls you and say, I want you to help me to make that this step. And it's, this is very tough. I had a student uh, at this moment that he's, the, he's um, from India. Okay, he studied he studied with me in Barcelona for three years when he was uh, 14 to, to 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 17 years old, and then uh, and then he started to go on the on the pro circuit. He, he didn't go to college. He didn't. He just went to the pro circuit and he started to make the steps here to try to go up. So in three years of being there he went to number 250 in the world. But then he, that was his, his ceiling, he couldn't go higher. So then, uh, not this year, the year, uh, 2017, the start of the year, he calls me, because he got a wild card in Chennai in, in, in India, and the biggest tournament there, and he got beaten by his uh, teammate from the Davis Cup, 6160. Wow. And he's already 350 in the world. So he's, he went up, touched the ceiling, and then he started to go down. So he goes and, and he's 350. He calls me and says, uh, what do I do? I say to him, you need to train. You need to develop the physical and the mental pillars because you've been competing in the futures for 48 weeks a year, for three years. So he's, he's like the federer of the futures. He won 40 futures. Or Natal, 11, 11 in Monaco. So he's like, like winning all the futures, but he's not making the step up to the bigger tournament. So he's then on the 350 and so on. And uh, so he, he came last year, he, to, he was six weeks only doing physical uh, double sessions and tennis double sessions. And finally, he started to go up. He finished last year on the 140. And then he started this year again. So he. he this year he was 140 and he came and, and, and we had a conversation and he said, well, I'm very close. I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make the top 100. I'm going to I'm, I'm be a pro. 140 in the world. So, but I, but I told him, I sit down with him and I said, Ram, you are not close. What do you mean you are not close? He said, no, you are 140 in the world. There is only five spots that they're going to change this year, and you have 40 guys ahead of you <laughs> that are better than you. So imagine that all of us, we are 50 people here, and we have only five <coughs> lunch here. It's going to be a big five, no? <laughs> yeah, but luckily, we have enough coffee and everything, but don't, don't need to fight. But that's the tour. And that's how tough is the tour that people is there so close, but still far away. So he, he still needs to improve all the, to define very well his, his tactics, to, to become stronger and more endurance, and to be better mentally, to play better than the, the tough balls. And then he'll have a chance. Now, this week he's 110. So he missed the Roland Garros entry by two players and Wimbledon. And he's going to have to play the Wallis. He'll be one of the top seeders in the Wallis. So he's almost, now, now he's closer. He's almost there, but he's still. Every week is, is a big challenge because every week the higher the level becomes more and more and more difficult. And that's, that's, that's what I want to explain before we start to talk about Spain and also we talk about the US. 
<laughs> and, 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 to, and to get to that and to see how difficult it is to make it to the tour, and then that's, that's <clears throat> and how demanding it is. And because people think, oh, it's very easy. No, no, no. This is, this is the most challenging profession that you can choose in your life, the tennis. Because you take soccer, there is 10 leagues with 500 players, and there is many more rotations. You take golf, there is four tours, the American, the European, the Asian, the Australian. So there is many more spots available if you have gifted to make it to the pros. Here, and the unfortunate thing about our industry is that 30 years ago when I was playing, they had 100 players also. And, and today the 100 players, they make better money, but it didn't improve. And next year, there's going to be this big change where they're from 2,000 players, they're going to carry to 500 or 600 players. The other ones are going to be out. So it's going to be even more challenging. And with the new with the, with the new format, because it's going to be even more difficult. They want to benefit the top juniors because they realize that, like the top juniors, like the ones who win the U.S. Open and the Wimbledon Junior, it takes them five, six years to make it to the tour. They thinking that taking away 1,500 players, those juniors they're going to step in the 500 or 600, and they're going to have the level to make it to the top. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Because if they don't have the pillars well done and well formed, there's no chance that they can beat those guys in the top 500. Yeah. Because they will have to have the process anyway, like Grand Kumar, to have all these years of growing. So, so it's, it's not because you're taking away jobs uh, or people from the ranking that you're gonna, the people who is going to be there is going to benefit from us. <coughs> but I think, I think they, they're going to struggle with that. And, uh, <coughs> and those five things, that's, that's what we define our pyramid. Eh? With, with, uh, and, and every one of the strings, we divide it in pieces. You see, like, like, like the bottom one, which is the big one, eh? we have here mini tennis, frame initiation, initiation, where the people start to play under 10s, under 8s, all the yellow, orange, green balls, everything will be on the yellow. Because yellow is big, that's, that's why we are here, where so many people, because it's big. And then uh, formation, that's when we start to compete more. Eh? The, when we got to play all these small tournaments and we start to play all these uh, competitions, teams. Eh? In the US, there is not many team play for the kids, but in Europe, it's, it's so many. And, and it's so, so, such a big advantage to, to have uh, team competitions for the clubs. Because the, the kids, they, they, they belong to a place and then they, they, they compete for that place. So there is a bit more of of um, attachment to something. Here, I can give lessons with him in his club, lessons with him, compete one tournament there, and the next day I play for him. And it's not perfect. So there is no belonging. Eh? And America is a place where we belong. We belong to the USPTA, we belong to the Lakers, we belong to the uh, Golden State, so, and, and we do it for, for time, and we belong. And we defend that. And here in tennis, there is a, a pity that there is not that belonging when they are kids. Eh? Because, because everything turned out to be that, that there is a, the, the typical clubs that they, they, they make the players feel that belonging, they tend to disappear. And, and, and the clubs become more uh, facilities in resorts, in, in <coughs> hotels, in, in different places, but we lose the, slowly we lose the clubs. And the biggest asset that we have in Spain when we compare it is the clubs. And, and, and the clubs is the, is, the, is, is the biggest power, and we will see after. And when we make the jump after, and then uh, here is, is, is the fight, it's a big fight. That's where, where many of the kids uh, stop, many of the kids don't, don't continue play, and, 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 and that's where we lose mainly the, the, the possibilities of, of doing our, our job, because we, we lose a lot of players on the, on, on the pathway. Because the, here, I think that there is a very small uh, ways to make it. There is not a clear pathway of how to make it. And so, if we take this this pyramid on the top, you see the the, the elite. And we, I asked you, how many of you work in elite? None. How many work in transition? None. How many? Any anybody here working in advance, like top <coughs> juniors or top? Um, or top um, future and, and development players? Anybody? No, eh? Anybody has a player like this? Yeah? Is in futures? 
She's ten number one in the state. So for me, she will be like inside this pyramid. They will be like she's competing number one in the state, so she's going up. If we will take, uh, because I don't have a <coughs> laser. Yeah. So if we will take here, like for example, college tennis. Where will be college tennis today on the pyramid? It, 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 it will be. There are some schools today that they have some players, maybe three hundred. Uh, 250 in the world, the top top number like Wake Forest is, 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 uh, has a few of ATP players and in the top 500. So the pyramid of the college will go to here, but the, the, the top part, but the lower part they will go to here and some of the low divisions they will go even to here for the level that they have. And so the important is that to know where, where are we on this, on, on this pyramid to go up or down or take advantage from from where we are, or, or try to make it to the next level. So here I put the, the US. <coughs> and the US uh, in the 1990, right? so 1990 US has 29 players in the top 100. And I started to play in 1983, I played juniors, and 84 I was in the Pro Tour. Okay, in 1984 US had 50 players in the top 100. So, 50 players here, about 6 years later, 29 players here, and then 16 and, seven, and 57 here on the, on the second stream, which is uh, on the top 200 and then top 500. So you have here a lot of players, but if you see the 5 years later, from 29 we pass to 21. Oops. Pass to 21. And then from 16 in the top 200 we pass to 8. And from 57, we, we passed to 26. So almost in, in five years, we lose half of the players here. Completely half. They retire, some other people, well, they disappear from the, from the chart. And then you go the next five years, with the best generation of American players, you have Agassi, Courier, and Sampras in the top. You have 12 players, and then 8 to 4, and then 26, 22. And then 10, 10, 17. So every five years has been decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So, so then you have five, uh, and then now there is a, a, a small change. There is starting to be a small change here, but the biggest change comes here, 15 to 24. And that's that's the biggest change. And we're going to go more specific now on on, 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 on on how we how we are working now at the moment here in the U.S. or the results that we're getting from it. And if we got the same the same type of of, of um, analysis from Spain. So in, that, in, in my generation, in, the, in, the, in, in 1990, we had 7, 6, and 15. And then 12, 9, 19, and 14, 10. So, and from here, 14, and then 10. And <coughs> if we put together all the number of players, it's been very consistent that Spain has been the top country of producing players in the top 100. But, they produce the players because they have the players in the bottom. It's not that they have many more than the US, but if we count the number of courts in Spain, you know how, how many courts you think there is in Spain? Tennis courts. How many in the US, more or less? How many hundred thousands? Or how many? How many you think? Huh? 200,000. In Spain, we have 5,000 courts. 5,000 courts. So, to, uh, to get to, to produce in the top 500 uh, about 40, 40 players from a small country like that, that means that there is something on the bottom of the pyramid that is very powerful. And uh, you, I can sell myself here, we are the top academy, we make so many players, but if we don't have the players that arrive to here, and we cannot deliver ourselves. Even if in our academies we start on the bottom and because we are also tennis clubs and we start to put players in. But how much time we need to put a player that starts at five years old to make it? So now I'm 53. So some of my players, like Andy Murray, is now um, on his studies. So. He arrived to Barcelona when he was 15 years old. But he was already really good at 15 years old. Really good. 
because he made a word somewhere that put him in a very good position. And every, every, every top academy is just like that, unless there is a player who starts with you, like us, we started 20 years ago in Barcelona, today we're starting to have players, eh, this, this next week we have graduation, and some players who started to play tennis with us, they graduate, they're going to go to college. But if you start at five years old and now you graduate, it's 13 years of pathway going on. So it's very, very slow process. So for you, that you are a coach of a 10-year-old, and I'm sorry to ask, but how old are you? 28. So 28. How many years have been coaching? So let's say that she continues number one in the state, and then she goes number one in the region, and then she goes number one in the country, and then she goes number one in the ITFs, and then from the ITFs she starts to play with the features, and then she makes it and she goes with you. So you are 28 years old, and you have to be ready to work with that person for 10 years more to start the tour. So it's a very slow pathway, and it's a big investment from all of us to be able to to, to invest in a career for someone. That is why many people who are very young arrive with a lot of energy to this, but they take a player and they go through this process and after six, seven, eight years, the parents or the players, they decide to change. And then you lose seven or eight years of your life because you had all your dreams put it on that player. So it becomes very ungrateful for the coach to be able to spend so much time with a person and at the end when the things are gonna arrive, I arrives here the agent and said, no, you should change him for Emilio because Emilio has more experience. And then you buy buy and then I jump in for the all the fame. Yeah. And that's yeah, but that's that's what happens. Especially when you are in a small cities, small clubs, small places. So it's very, very unfair. And we have to be ready to be to be there. And and, and I always tell my coaches, where do you want to be? So you can be the best in the world in the yellow. And be incredible coach there, but you have to know that after three, four, five years, your players are going to go to the Orange and it's going to go to the next uh, super, super top coach on the Orange. Or if the dream for the coach is to go all the way, and then it's very important that you get together with the best level every time to be able to go with them and, 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 and stick to that job. Okay? So you have to be improving all the time to be able to keep that player. Okay? So, when we see here Spain producing so many players, it is thanks that the bottom, the yellow and the orange, in many places, is done very well in Spain. In many clubs, it's done very well. Because almost everyone, as they got together to work in, in, a, in, in some way, similar way. It's not exactly, because every person has their own, their own uh, personal touch and their own personal things, but <clears throat> on the... When, when one of the things that I can I say and, and, and is I don't want to be uh, cocky, but in Spain we had an incredible champions with Santana and Orantes and Jimeno, and then there was a, 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 a about ten years which there were not so many good players, like 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 there was not so much attention. We had at some moment after Orantes we had Igueras, but Igueras as soon as he 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 stopped, uh, he was playing, he came to the US and lived here for forever. So he was not so like a symbol in Spanish tennis to follow him because he went to the US and he, he, he was not sharing so much with the Spanish tennis anymore. So there was a gap there of players that we had some players like uh, Luna and, and many different good players but not top to, to drive the thing. So then. Then we opened the doors and, uh, and, 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 and uh, I arrived to top 10 in the world. At the moment there were only two TV channels in Spain. So every match we make to the semi-final tournament ATP and eh, we'll be in TV. So, so we become much more famous than, 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 than what we deserve because the, at the moment there was a lot of attention on the tennis. So they start to open a lot of doors. And it is something that, that the state or, or any legacy from our <coughs> first years on the tour, it was that, uh, that uh, with our coach and the group of players, with uh, Casal and Aguilera, my brother, uh, Costa, we created, with my coach, we created a way to do. So we created like a, like a philosophy of, 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 of life in the Pro Tour. So um, we were playing the matches and after the match we were going to go after to, 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 to clean the game, 
we were the first one arrived to the club. We were very consistent, making a big effort with not so many with not so many tools, but we created a way to go. And from there, every generation was better and better and better. And almost everyone in Spain, we are very famous for the drills, eh? for the drills, the Spanish drills, and we are very famous for the for the movement controls. And 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 everybody does that in a different ways, but everybody does that. So we created so a way to do, like a, like a, like an identity. And when you see a Spanish player on a, on, on a big TV like this, and you are far, you don't see the names. When you see that Spanish player moving, you really realize that the player is from Spain, because there is this way to do, and was mainly focused on the movement and how to, how to have the maximum options on, 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 on uh, every one of the shows that you can play. So, <clears throat> And for me, uh, that's that's very important because because even today, like last year, we did this this study with with our players and with our coaches, with our ex-players. We call everyone that has been Dimitrov and Murray and Kuznets. So we 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 call them to ask them how they, what they see in Sanchez Casal, eh? what they see in Sanchez Casal, and they don't remember if we changed the forehand or if we changed like. Like the grid, or if we uh, had, they they remember stories and they remember values. They remember hard work. They remember effort. They remember discipline. They remember that they learn to respect. Yeah, and, 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 and and when and, and those values that they they come out in the academy after 20 years, if we go to the Spanish overall, that's what the Spanish players have. They are more work more effort, they put more effort, they work harder than the other ones, they are more disciplined, and they are more respectful and in general in, 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 on, on the tour. And, and that's, that's the, this identity that I think stay there through the time and become stronger and stronger because uh, Bruguera was better than me, and then Correx was better than him, and then Ferrero better than him, and then Moya better than him, and then Nadal, which is better than everybody. <laughs> so it's like the best example, and every every interview they make me and say, well, who is the next Nadal? I say, there is no next Nadal. It doesn't exist next Nadal. It's not, it's not possible that it's another Nadal like that. So but what we have to do is take the full advantage from, from him, and, 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 and he is one of the big examples of this kind of identity that, that we want to show the people. Because, because it's, it's, it's the one who works harder, is the one who puts more effort, the more discipline on his things, even the more discipline with his habits, but is is the best ambassador of this kind of like a like identity. And, and that's what gives us so many, so many success. And, and then <clears throat> these ones we went apart. So here I, I did an article in 2016 in, in one of the magazines that was a big, big success, and we compared uh, the Spanish tennis with the with the American tennis. Okay, and, and here we just put the top two lions. You, you, before you remember in the pyramid, we had the five lions. Here we forget about the ones that we won, but we, we, we want to explain the top. Okay, so and this is the the, the U.S. in the on 2016, and uh, if you see, they have 36 players. So they had only six in the top 100, 11, 9, 6, and 4. And these are the ages. So plus 30, 26 to 29, 20 to 25, 20 to 22, and 17 to 90. So that's, that's almost the junior stream, which is the, which is the one that, that you need to really push. And, and uh, so if we go and to analyze this, what we see here, what, 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 what you guys see here? This is, this is uh, November 16. If we go here, this is uh, December 17, so five months ago. And uh, this is um, right now. Yeah, here. This is right now. This week. So I put this for today for this chapter. Okay, so what we see here from what 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 do you guys see when you have to analyze American tennis? So we go back. So we have six, eleven, nine, six, four. In general, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 in the world. So next one year later, U.S. from the five spots, 
from the five spots that we said worldwide, they took three spots. So it was an incredible year because before that, they had so many players on the bottom that they're going to go up. So if you were here, you see those two of those players that be going up. If we go now here, so this is this week, we have also Fritz here that is back on the top 100. So there is nine players in the top 100. So US is, is almost there to become the top uh, producer of top 100 players in the world. It's only France ahead of US at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but, but the most important thing that the US has at this moment is that he has all this group of players here. He has 12 players, and counting even these two, 12 players that are in the top 300 in the world that are under 22 years old. Under 22. Okay, so you have Donaldson, Escobedo, McDonald, Rubin, Eubanks, eh? Harrison, Opelka, Moore, Koslo, Paul. So we have to see how these players adapt to the situation if these ones they jump up. But when they jump up, it's going to be a big, big, big success for the next five, ten years for American tennis. Because they, they done something good because they, they, they create so many players to go up. But what we see, where, if we will analyze, for me, if I will be USTA, I will have to analyze why I have so many players here and I have very few. Now it's not a problem because you have this, but if I will be, I will be worried that these players get in the top 500, I, I start to not have any players. When we did this article, I was comparing US tennis because this was lower <coughs> with the Spanish tennis. Spanish tennis in, in 2016 had, was this. So we had all of our players, we are the best in the world, 11 players here. And we had all these players around here on, on top of 30 years old. But what happened here? That the Spanish system, uh, the players, because there is not so many tournaments, not so many future challenges, no federation no, doesn't have money, they don't do any hundred thousands or so like, 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 like they do here, they take longer because they go the tough way, they, like the Indian. The Indian boy will be here now. So, but he had to go through here. And they take longer, it's like the South Americans, or so they take longer because they, there is not so many opportunities on site. The big advantage here is that there is a lot of opportunities on site and that's why they produce more players. So this, this was in um, November 16. If we go to February, I, I took November, you see that four players jump in from none. Now four players in only one year. And we lose the three that the US won at 11. Now we have only eight. And this week, eh, we, we, we gain one more. So, but if you see our players at the top, all of our players are over 32, 31 years old. So we really are under pressure to be able to, to fill those spots, because these spots, maybe two or three years, they will all be gone. Four years, maybe, today with the... With the, with the Physical uh, pillar today is so good that the players can last longer and, 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 and they work much better, so they can last a bit longer. But they are there, like Feliciano is 36, Ferrer 36, uh, Garcia Lopez, Bernasco 34, uh, Menendez and Lucas 32, 32, 32. So there is a lot of a lot of players that they are they are uh, on the on the moment to start to deliver not so good physical things, but. We are here. We start to put players here. You see, two 18 years old, and then these ones here. So we start to fill up the things when, when one year ago we didn't have because the Spanish players they go slower, okay, but they slowly putting players up. I put you an example here for because we we have a fair academy that we do a joint venture with the with the government from China, and uh, we analyze a bit the Chinese tennis. And Chinese tennis is if they they trying since the year 2000 to, to put more players on the tour, but they, they make the wrong decision, which was to try to follow the, the pathway that they have for developing players, the same as, as ping pong and badminton and uh, gymnastics or, 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 or fencing, that they are really good putting the players in one room and making them practice all day there. In tennis, that doesn't work. In tennis, if, if, if we put in a room four players, 
and, and at the end, they don't go all together and they go up. You need to reach the level on that. You need to play with good players to beat good players. And, 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 and um, lately, they've been working uh, a bit better, and we see here that this will be the 500, like the other, like Spain and US, but I had to put here from the 500 to the 2000. This stream is going to disappear, because these tournaments next year, they're not going to count. But look how many people they're starting to put down here, which they, before they didn't have. And if we go to this year, you see here from 17 to 19 to 20, and how many more players they are putting in with points. So, so they are starting to go on a better pathway, and in, in, soon in the, in the, in the future, they're going to have these players from moving towards here, and they're going to start. This kid here is the one, the one 70 years old, he won the US Open Junior last year, and he's a big talent. Still far away, but he's already won a challenger, so he's, he's in the in 200 and something in the world. So he's in a good. If this kid breaks through, he's not going through the normal Chinese pathway. So, so if he breaks through by himself, with his private coach and so, I think the other one, they will have a model that they will go and break through. The problem is that the normal pathway with the province teams, and these province teams, they pay them so much money to be on the province team. So they make them be in China for so long. And, and when you have a big salary, and you, this kid is in, in, in our academy, it's it down. And he has like an $11,000 salary to play the teams. And he's five, four or five months there playing teams in China that, uh, that with lower players. So he don't improve. He don't want to go to, I don't know, to Slovakia to play a challenger or to here in a in, in, in small place in Osprey or somewhere. He don't want to do that because he has already a big salary. He, oh, oh, oh. Why you need more than that? This is, and, and then they break a bit the, 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 the drive to be able to make it to the top. This is Mexico, next door. And Mexico used to have a lot of good players before, but today look. So it's very difficult. And I put this example because it's a, it's a, it's a neighbor, and, but it's very difficult to play, to, or today, to put players here in some countries. And, 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 and it's, not, it's not that they don't work well, they have, a, they have their own people, they have their own group, they have their own things, but it's very tough because you need so many components to be able to make it. And here I put you very brief what I think there are some of the factors of success in Spain. Uh, first of all, the clubs. Uh, because every club has their competition groups and they go to the tournaments and they let the coaches in the clubs and even if they are in an after school program, go with the kids to compete. And I think that's a big, big plus. And here, most of us, eh, when we do the lessons, and then the kid goes with the parents to compete. And that's a, that's a big, big uh, step back. Eh, because it's, uh, the most important thing that a player needs is to know, is to know why he wins and why he loses. Even a 10-year-old. If the 10 year old loses three or four matches and don't know why she loses, she's going to start to think that maybe she should stop because it's not worth it. And even at super top level, I look at a, a player today like Djokovic. Djokovic, that was the, the player who played the best in the most difficult moments, that he was like, a, like, a, like an impossible to beat. Eh? And then, for personal issues, he went out, and then he started to lose matches. And now, when he goes to play the important points, now that he wants to play back, he cannot play the points. So, if you imagine if the best player in the world happened that, imagine a 10 year old when he loses matches. So, that's why it's very important to go with the players, and that's why we try to always be there with them. Eh? We make a big effort in our academies to, to make the traveling teams and to try to be with every player every match they play. Eh, because they, even if they could play alone many times, eh, they, when, you, when they play alone, you risk to lose them. Eh, and, and if you give giving lessons to them and they lose a lot at the end, you may lose them as, as, as clients. And you may lose <coughs> eh, the opportunity to continue developing those players. And that's, that's, that's a tough, tough thing to do. 
the former players, I think in Spain uh, in that has is been very fortunate. Most of the players uh, that uh, that they were in the top, all of them we are in tennis. Even even today, Nadal, which which is still number one, he already has his academy. He already does tournaments. He already is an um, engine for Spanish tennis on the side of his playing, which is a big engine already. But but he's he's helping. Hey, but if you go back, you have Ferrero has his academy, Rubena has his academy, and we, because with Sergio, we have the academy. But we not only the academy. We we do tournaments. We do continuous um, things around. We do courses for coaches. So we are in the industry. And we help the industry. And, and when you have people that is being an example or, 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 or uh, leaders that they are in what you do, I think that for many people it's very helpful. And, 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 and for us it's also a also, also big thing because I was telling my coaches they start to say, oh, we cannot compete with Nadal. Because he has sponsors, he, has, uh, he can give scholarships, he has everything. Or Morato Group in France, which is in about four or five hours away from us. So, no, but before, 20 years ago, we were the only ones. So everybody come to us. But now, so it's the moment to show the experience and to show what we are and to show how good we are. So because competition makes you better. You have to deliver better what you do well. And, 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 and of course, it's, it's, it's not going to be so easy to get the students. And uh, because they're going to have different options. But it's the moment to really be the best that you can be. And to be able to challenge those guys. And if we are able to challenge Nadal, what, what else we can do? He's still playing number one in the world. And if they're still uh, following our path. So if we change something, they also change something. So that's, that's I think, very, very, very productive and, and, and really good. And it's difficult because there's many people who, who don't, don't accept that because they, they feel they see it as a as a problem, but, but for me it's a, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And if not, we should do another thing. I, I mentioned before about the training system, and we call it 360 because it goes all around the player with all the four pillars, and, uh, and, um, and it's, it's, it's during this long process of 15, 20 years. So to develop a player is not that only to teach him the forehand, the backhand, the service, the volley. It's so many more things around the player that you have to teach them that is going to take a lot of time. And you have to have a special character and a special way to do that that, uh, that um, differentiates, the, for me, the trainers, which are the ones who teach you the, the, the technique and the tactic, and to the coaches. Coaches are the ones that, for me, live for the player. And live for the player through the process and to be able to develop them on the physical and on the tactical and on the mental pillars. And coaches are, are, they have this special mindset. And uh, for me, that's one of the things with the, with the, um, with when I see here in, the, in, in, for example, USDA, sometimes, oh, we, they send this coach 10 weeks, or this other coach 15 weeks. They need, for me, the federations, they are like the academies. We need coaches that they have this coach mindset. And, they, and, and the people who live for the players. And, 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 and that when, you, when you are lucky and find people like that, and then the result is way much better. Way much better. Because at the moment that, that you make the mistake to choose trainers where they're supposed to be the coaches, or coaches, and it's like when I send my coaches to do, I send my coaches to do the, the initiation or the mini tennis. And I have a coach that, that uh, now is the director in China and he's always been on the challenger and, and future level. He was 100 in the world and he's always been in the competition. I send him to, uh, on training before he goes to China to do the initiation stage in, in, in here in Florida. And he comes back and says, this is the toughest thing in the world. This is so difficult. This is much more difficult than the pros. So, so and, 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 and he was there, and he tried to learn from the coaches that they were there, they are experts on that, but, but everything is really difficult. So it's, it doesn't mean that you work on the bottom of the pyramid that, that is not important. And that's the most important, to be able to put players with good qualities. And if, if we don't do well the work in the bottom, and 
we don't correct well the grips and we don't make the play easy to the players, what will happen when they go to orange? And what will happen when they go to the red stage that they're going to come to me and they arrive with the grip like this? I'm playing down here. Yeah, or they don't know how to do the things. So that means that the, the fundamentals are not developed properly. And, 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 and that's what I believe that they could be done here, that put together a, a much better fundamental system to be able to make better the players. One of the things that we see in the coaches' courses that we give, and that next week we're gonna, we normally do two, two coaches' courses in May and in October or November in, in Naples. That, and we have a lot of young coaches, they come in from college and they want to become coaches. And, and in those courses, that's when we choose the, the coaches that I want to be that working with them. Okay, but in those courses, it's really important that they already know okay, where they want to be. They have to be have very clear that that, 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 that mindset. And uh, and um, we 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 been developing a lot of of of, of, uh, of that through those courses. And after in the book, we will have some brochures and everything from those courses in the case anybody is interested. On, on knowing that. And uh, coaches education. We are a small academy in private that we do coaches education because we believe that it, it, there is a need. But the big organizations like USPTA, RPTs, PTRs, and uh, USTAs, those are the ones that they should be thinking to give more training to you guys. Uh, for example, the, the France is always there. Why is it always there? Because they have the best way of training their coaches because they have to go through, this, through the federation and every two years they have to be there and they, they, they go through all the new new techniques and everything. So, so you have here the possibilities but, but uh, there is no connection. And that disconnect between who should be doing or giving the, the latest on trainings, eh, it doesn't, they don't give courses. So I think that, that is something that they should work on here to be able to deliver better 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 teaching. And uh, the academies, as I said, and the identity I also mentioned. So to, to, to finish, they're <coughs> already coming in to, to see if I finish. Uh, for me, <laughs> so for me, I mentioned this. Uh, coaching level has to improve here. I think that you are here, guys, and you're leaving your lessons and everything is a big step ahead. Coaching level has to improve, and, and, and it has to improve in all the stages of the pyramid, in every one of them, and then we will have better results. And then I think the clubs, I don't know, but if there, even if there is no clubs, we are, in, we are somewhere doing the lessons. And we can have this mentality, this philosophy, this identity of being, even if we are in a private or public or whatever, that there is not a club, to make the people feel more belong to the tennis and to that place. And that's a big plus because that belonging is going to make them delay the chance to stop and, and leave us. It's gonna, they're going to stay more with us. If they wear, eh, if they wear our, our t-shirts, if they, if, they, if they wear with the racket, if they like the competition, if they like the tournament, if they like the games or, or, or whatever we, we do in our places, it's going to be much more difficult that they leave. We need to keep the people that, that, that we have. And there is a lot of people here because there is a lot of courts. And, and, and that, that's a big thing. Also on the, on the tournament side, I think that with all these new rankings, ITF and UTR and USTA and TPR and this and that, there is a lot of opportunities to keep the people in the tennis. And, and the more tournaments we do, the better. This one is, doesn't belong directly to us, but if there is a student that is hungry and socially wants to make it on the tour, that, that we <coughs> can take it as an example. We cannot put them apart. That has to be the example for the other ones to follow. And, 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 and for us, on, the, on our groups, we always try to put in every one of the groups one, one leader, one, 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 one person that is hungry. because. What happens when, as I said, if we play with good, we be good, but we can copy the good one or we can copy the bad one. So, so and, 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 and the, the, the groups of people is, 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 is a lot, uh, 
they follow a lot the, 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 the pathways from the others. And what is easier, to follow the leader or to follow the one who criticizes and, and is negative? Which one is easier? It's easier to criticize. Because to follow the leader, we have to do. And do, we become doers. And doers is sometimes tough. Sometimes tough. So, and in the little environment with the kids and the schools and so, there is always a good leader. So we have to take advantage from that in, 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 with our groups and with our lessons or whatever we do. And, 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 and if we don't have that, who has to be the leader? You guys. You are the examples for these students in many ways. Or how many times the kids come to tell you things that they is not telling the parents? How many times is you are becoming a reference more than the parents? And so you can become a leader on the way to do, on the way the energy that you put, on the, on the, on, on the state that you put the lessons, and, 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 and with examples, with, with, with different ways to, to do, to be able to keep that the student to follow you. Because if that the student follows you in time, eh, it's going to be for life. And for me, the biggest legacy is to have most of my coaches, they were students, they went to college, they come back, and they work, and they work, and they work with the heart. And that's the biggest, biggest, biggest asset that I think we have. And that my students, when they are in college in the summer, they want to come and help, and so and so, for me that's a success. Because if, if you break the, the nuts and, and, and they disappear, that means that they, you, you were nothing for them. And, 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 and I don't know if you've been in the tournaments, but if you find my coaches, don't 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 criticize the system or don't criticize that because they're gonna get on to you. Because they are the ones who live with that, and they are the. I, I'm trying to show you what we do, but they are the ones that they are there every day, and they are there and um, fighting and, and defending the, what we do and the system more than anyone. And we should be a group defending what we do in the USPTA more than anyone in this case, or the USDA, or whatever courses we do, because they are the best courses, and they give us what we are doing. But how much we defend them? How much do we think that what we get from, 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 from the training is what really what we're giving? And, and it's, 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 it's very powerful, and it's very strong. Okay, they teach us some ways, some techniques, but that, it tends to be that most of the people and criticizes a lot what we have. And the level that we get on the training, it tends to be limited. I don't want to say bad, but limited. And so if we want to improve, we need to improve here. And, and if we have more, we have more into it, I think it's going to be very helpful. <clears throat> and then the last one, I, for me, is a, it's a, it's a big surprise that looking for numbers and everything. I realized that U.S. through all this, we have 200,000 players in high school. 200,000 players in high school. What that means, 200,000 players in high school? How many of those 200,000 players make it to college in tennis? One percent. Eh? 5% will be from 200,000, how much? Will be 10,000? Yes, no? Yeah? yeah. And you don't know what? No, it will be... Uh, how many? 200,000, how many? 10,000. Yeah. There is a total of 20,000 players in college. And there is only between two and 3,000 American players. Which, from the two or three thousand American players, we have to take away maybe one thousand that they go through the US trade pathway through the tournaments and they don't do college tennis. So we have two hundred thousand college play, I mean, college uh, high school players that because the high school association doesn't talk to the college association and the college association doesn't talk to the USDA and the USDA doesn't talk to the WTA, there is not a pathway to be able to make the players go through that. So how, how high school tennis can think that they are in the middle of the pathway when they only play one month and a half a year? 
It's impossible. So how you compete with Spain? That the same high school player in Spain is playing 20 hours a week, and here they're playing only one month and a half and two hours a week, and two hours a day. So maybe 10 hours a week. Right. It's impossible that in a sport like tennis that you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. You can compete with that. So we as coaches, we losing 200,000 players because when they finish high school, they don't jump to the college. They they stop. And then may, they may come back when they are 27, 28, they finish the, the college or the studies or the masters or whatever, and they have jobs, they may start to play again. And maybe we get some lessons there because they want to, they want to play back. But on development, so Spain, Spain total amount of players in competition from 10 to 18, we have about 40,000 players. Here, 200,000. So, Five times more, only playing. So and 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 we lose them. So for me, that's that's a big a, a, a big thing because because we all lose. You guys lose opportunities. We lose opportunities because we have less people coming to the academies. And and, and and then those high schools. I think that one solution will be that they are attached to a club. And the, the the lack of training that they have in the high school, maybe they could have it in the club. So the clubs could strengthen their programs of development. But then there is not so many that they do that. Because in the club, the owners, they want every hour of the coach to, to produce $50 or $40 or whatever. And then if you want to do the groups on the high school, because normally they pay less. So it's a big problem because everything is monetized. So in, at the end, it becomes very difficult for the people to have a pathway like, in, like, like they have in Europe. But in the Europe, they have it because in the clubs, there is not, most of the clubs, they are non-profit. So, so the, the investment from the club it goes on the on, on the on the brand itself. So, so, so for the clubs it's very important to do well in these teams and to become the best club in Barcelona or in Madrid or the national or whatever. And they compete and they, so they put the resources with the best coaches <coughs> on the teams and on the schools in the clubs. So there is not such a big need for to, to make the step ahead and, and, and do other things. And I think that that is a big that. That is a big opportunity that they should be. But the high school association should talk to the NCAA, the NCAA should talk to the USTA and, and define a pathway. How are we going to do it? Like they have in football, in hockey, in soccer, in everything, there is a pathway through the education. And that's how I finish my thing. We are a tennis academy, but we are an educational institution. Because the education part is the middle and high school is, is an opportunity for my players. And, and, and that's, that's, I think, we have to get this educational part, which we have so many players, and take advantage from it. Because there is a big amount of players here that they could be much better, or at least they could stay in tennis, and we could live better, have better programs. I'm sure, for sure, there is some talent there that they, 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 they can jump. And, 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 and if he has a 10-year-old that is really good, if this program becomes good, he has more people to play with, his, his, his girl. And he don't need to go to Barcelona or to somewhere because he has better level everywhere. So if we improve the level in the middle school, ages from, 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 uh, from uh, 11 to 14, I, in middle school, and then from 14 to 18, there's going to be many more players. And, and, and in this, I don't think we need so much. We, need so, we don't need so much the USDAs or, or the big, 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 big programs of development. I think with this, we need the energy from us to see which programs we have from middle school close to us, to see which clubs we have close to us, and try to, to collaborate and work together to improve the level. If we improve the level in our area, he has something, he has something, he has something. We improve the level, and then everybody wins. Because we'll have more players, and, 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 and we could be more, more, more successful. And that's that's where more most of the of the differences they are in in, in, in Europe, I think. And, and knowing Spanish tennis, that's where the where the <coughs> where the um, difference is, is on the level, and on the level of the of the of the kids. But the level of the kids arise because of the level of the coaches. <coughs> Structures in the clubs and in the different in the different places. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Good question. It looks like on one of the graphs you had.
at Bruce Spain, the Spanish players, how currently there's a lot of them that are at the elite, the top, top 100, that were all 30 plus. But there's fewer in, you know, <coughs> fewer in the 20 and below. Do you have any theories for that? Well, I, I said that it takes longer for them that to make it there. And there is a gap now today in that, that the, with the players <coughs> arriving. Hey, like when I started to play in, in, in the tour in the 83, I, 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 play a, a, I play a challenger and then I play a, a um, satellite and then I qualify in a, mass, in a, in a tournament, in an ATP tournament and then I make the semis, I, I took a special exam, semis, special exam and semis. So in three tournaments, Plus a challenger and a, and a satellite, I was sixth in the world. So that is impossible to happen today. Today, to, to make it to the to the to the um, top spots, it takes much longer. Why? Because before, if you had a a, a, a gift to do something very well at junior, you will compete all the way from 1,000 to 100. You will pass like a rocket. Today, you need to develop completely the technical pillar. You, just, you need to be really good in everything. On the tactical, you have to be a, almost exceptional eh, to know what, what you do well and when you do it well. Then, uh, on the physical, today is so demanding because the physical side improves so much that, that that's a part of the, of the development that is, that is, uh, is a must. And, and in many of the programs, they don't do it. How many of you have a physical program attached to your tennis lessons? Three, four. Depends on the level. Sorry? Depends on the level. Depends on the level. But if we want a student that is in a lower level, <coughs> make the mindset to be able to improve physically when we have to start, when it has the level or before yeah, to yeah. learn. Eh? So when we want to do equations, we start, when we are little, we start to do plus, minus, divisions, multiplications, and everything. So then we can do equations later on. So this is the same. So at higher level, we're going to need everything. And we're going to need it written very well in our mindset. And because in, in tennis, if there is something that is incredible, is that anything is a habit. And the forehand is a habit, the backhand, the, the, the serve, the, all the shots. But also the movements are habits. And also the way to be on the points, and the way to apply your patterns, and the way to do things uh, is, 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 is a habit. And to put a habit on you, I don't know if you guys try it, but it's difficult. To change the mind, the mind is very smart. So you try to change a habit on yourself if you, uh, I don't know, for example, with the kids at home. At some moment, I had we, I was living in a small apartment. I changed to a home because I had kids that they had two floors. One day I was living the, the cars in the and the kids on the car. Another day on the garage. Another day on the dining room and so. On. <coughs> the next morning, I don't remember where I have the kids. So I have to make the the tour for the house to find the kids. So and, and they told me, so put one place you put the kids and you put it there. And you put it there one day, two days, two days, four days, five days. And then after one month, when you don't put the keys there, you say, where are my keys? I have to put them there. And that's a habit. You know, they, they say that if you do something consistently, and then it takes more in between one and three months to, to create that new path on your brain. So if I shot, like I have a grip like this, so I go with him to make a lesson, say, no, you. Emilio said you have to go with a grip like this, so let's change it. So you tell me, you teach me eh, how to change it, so I change it. But then you go there and I play a match. How I play the match? Like this or like this? I play like this. And even if I create a new path and I start to play like this all the time, in a moment that I lose my brain and I don't think, I will go like this. Eh, because the, the pathway is already created. So. So, and, and, and that's tennis, it's, it's, it's all about pathways and about, about habits. And that's, that's why we are normally very, very consistent, so, or, or consistent on what we do.
And many people give jobs to, to tennis players or to coaches, not because they have the consistency of the creating those habits. And that for every everything in life is, is, is really important. It's, it's the most difficult thing to do, to create habits. But going back, here, and, uh, our players, they take longer for us. Uh, but you see in one year, we put some players here that they have <coughs> had, like, this spoon is very good, Taverner is very good, Davidovich won the Wimbledon Junior, like the Chinese, but he's here. So, the, so for example, the Chinese, because they have many more challengers with the same age, same result as here, he's here. This one is, so it takes a bit longer to find the way, because in Spain we don't have tournaments. So they don't work out. So you have to do it the tough way. You have to go to the futures, then to the challengers, and so on, and so on, and so on. I understand. I just, I'm just looking at the chart, you guys. There's two guys under the age of 30 that are in the top 100. These ones? Correct. These ones here? No, from the, the top row, 1 to 100. The yeah. four columns from 27, 29, all the way through 70 to 20. Yeah. It just seems a surprising drop, that's all. Well, when you have such a big... No doubt, no doubt, big, not critical e every, every Every country, like, remember with Becker, after they have a big gap. With uh, Borg, Sweden had 20 players in the top 100, and then they had a big... Today they don't have players, Sweden. Australia, they went down or so. It's very difficult to, to follow up on, on the first... Uh, when you have these big successes, like, like the US, we said it before, when uh, some Prasagasi, Martin, and Courier, they were there. Five players in the top ten. But what happens when you have such a big and a strong um, generation? This, this next one, normally is, they tend to give up because there is, no, there is no attention, there is no competition, so they, they tend to, to give up. And it is very, very difficult that they, that they follow up. And, and, uh, and uh, instead, why, why is it very difficult? Because you don't have to make the attention now for this. This, when they were 12 or 14, they were competing with each other. So the, after 12 and 14, when they were here, the ones behind, they, they, many of them stop or they don't follow or they don't compete, they don't, have, they don't get the, that level. So this, this, this has a... a, a <coughs> like a way to go that is very difficult to follow it instead of attach yourself to it. Then you have the one here, this is, this is also going, going Carreño is very, he's 26, but he's been three years now playing. So he's, uh, so from all this, when they finish, our biggest and, and more example will be Carreño. Because Ramos is also here. Ramos and Bautista, they arrive very late because they arrive with 24, 25, but they are 30 already. But they're gonna be here. These 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 ones on the thirties, they they're gonna be here for five years. It's like Nadal is thirty-one, but with the level that they are of performance today, from thirty-one to thirty-five, is they're gonna last there if they don't get injured or they get tired. But they, they normally they're gonna stay there for a while. So we can still get the example from this, from all this. If these guys they mix with Nadal and Bautista and Ramos, they will still go up. If these guys give up now. These ones will not have so many examples, will be more difficult. Yeah. That's why the, the America now, they have a big <coughs> opportunity to follow the Fritz and TF4 that they are very, very gifted and they, they pro probably they're going to break a lot of, a lot of uh, barriers. Do you feel that the uh, base of the pyramid technical instruction is becoming more watered down? The basic? At the base of the pyramid, development pyramid. Do you feel that technical instruction is becoming more watered down? Uh, I think that the pyramid is becoming more down because there is many more ways to train when they are little. Okay, so, so today I see clubs that they have uh, um, after school at three, at four years old. In, in Belgium they take them at two years old already with the tiny rackets with the phone balls, and, and, and they, in England also they, 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 they are doing it very well with these uh, new, new ways of teaching, and they are really good in the under 10s. Yeah, but the thing is that with the under 10s arrives, like I said, that's why I say I put four layers in the, in the initiation, I put four in, in our pyramid. 
And then you see here, one, two, three, four. That's why it's becoming bigger, because you have many different stages. So if you start to play at three years, three years old, <coughs> and we put 10 years here, so this layer will be like maybe four years, like <coughs> under 12 and under 40. But this one is from three to 10 is eight years. So here we have business for eight years. So that's why it's becoming more, more with more depth. And then there's many more people doing incredible programs. I got a guy from Germany the other day presenting a program for, for, for a tiny tennis that they, they put so many players on the same court and, and mix them up together and, and doing really well. So there's more people doing much better on those stages and, and, and developing people very well. So, so it's a big opportunity because in that program, I think that you put 24 players in one court and they were all playing at the same time. So it's, that's for the people who don't have many courts. Like we have a lot of courts in our facility, but the people who have two courts, and you can put 24 per hour in the same court and give an excellent service, and then you're keeping those players and you're raising the level. If you do a program that is old and so on, you put six people with one line in the same court, and then, and then it, 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 the level is going to go down. So we have, that's why we need, we need to, to, to keep improving the, what we're doing. Can you very quickly tell us a little bit about the competitive structure for that yellow level in Spain for, for the kids? What ages they play on red? What ages are on orange? Do they have any? Is it, is that you want to know or not? <laughs> he's, <coughs> he's asking me about how on the yellow level, what competition stages we have here, or how the kids compete. And uh, uh, we have uh, competition in Spain mainly with the green dots. There is a bit of, of, uh, of competition with the, with the orange, but it's more internal in their own clubs. Like when they are starting, and so they make them play with the, mainly with the little courts, and then they make them play some, some games and some some kind of competition like that. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's, 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 it's very important that competition to keep the players, to find that, that they, for example, we organize in Barcelona with different clubs, uh, tourna uh, like inter-club tournaments with, with the mini courts. And, uh, and um, we have three play mini courts in, in the academy, and, but when we have many more players, we put the mini courts in the, in the normal courts like most of you do so. so but this, this, this stage is, is, is really important for the players to feel that they can start to compete because if we go to all of us to play soccer, from the first day we play a match. In tennis we need to create all this habit that if we don't compete, even only with the forehand, and then we're going to lose those players because they're going to have more fun in another, in another sport. So we need, at this age, we need to make it very much fun. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and try to bring them the, the, the part of the competition because that is what, what is going to make them stay in tennis. That's what they created the mini tennis, or the, they created all this competition. Before it was much, much easier. I started to play when I was eight, so in one year I was already competing under 12. But I was competing. If I was not competing and my mom tells me, let's go to tennis, I say, no, mom, you go to tennis. I don't want to be there. Eating <laughs> more like that. Because it's boring, and I, and I know it's important for the for the technique and for the lessons and for us. But but they need a, they need to play. They need to play, and, and that's 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 one of the, the most important things. Having the clubs, all these kids, they stay many hours apart from the lesson. So they stay in the club and they play between themselves. They play, and they go on the tree and they play and they go on the soccer and they play. So they play all day, and that is a big help. That is a big help. And most of the kids there, they do different sports, and that's very helpful. Because, because they develop, the, develop the, the, the player. The specialization here doesn't mean that we have to specialize here. And if you don't have much space, you can create things that the, that the, that the players develop themselves eh, physically. And, and, and they don't need to be playing at those moments. So that, those are things that are very important. So you spent a lot of time showing us the men's side, the trends are similar on the women's side for Spain. Yeah, practically the, the, if, if we put the women's, is, is we, we 
will spend much more time. But it's a, in, especially in the US, there is, there is a, 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 a parallel pathway. Uh, for example, in Germany, when, when, when Becker was there, and then, uh, which was a big, 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 big leader, and Graf was there at the same time. So, but the, on the girls, it took them a bit longer to go down. Here, it went very much together. So there, there is a the chart that at some moment, the US had 50 players, then 20, then 10, da, 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 da. and then the, with the years of the Williams, one of the years was only five players in the top 100, and two were Williams. So, and that's, that's because there was not, at some moment, there was not production, because they, they, before them, with the Evers and the Ratilovas and all this, this moment, the things start to go down. Also, we have to say, okay, to go from 50 players in the top 100 at the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the 80s is because college tennis was the only way to make it to the tour. Because it was the highest level competition that there was at the time. So it was very easy for the college players that, that did before me to make it to the tour. Like all the Wilkinsons and all, all of those guys, in, they had the, the strongest competition was in college tennis. Why? Because in Europe, there was no tennis club back then to produce players. The, the, the tennis clubs in Europe, they start to be built in the, in the 70s and in the 80s, but because we need 20 years to make players, or 15 years, so if you make the clubs in the 70s, in the, in the, in, you start to get the players in, in, the, in the late 80s, in the 90s, and that's when the, the tour start to turn. Most of the tournaments back then, they were also here, eh, and, 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 and in the US there were many more tournaments. As the clubs become more strong, the tournaments become more strong, so the, the, there is a shift of players, so 70, 80% of the players, they are European because of the, the club, the club um, uh, structure challenge the college. Because the college <clears throat> don't get enough players from their own structure, from the middle and the high school, or the clubs in the US. So where do they take the, 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 the players, the college? From the clubs in Europe. Which 80% of those 20,000 players in college are from Europe also. Because they are producing, because they play, they doing better in the bottom. So that's why we have a big opportunity because we are the bottom. So we can really do much better. The majority of our American athletes, our best athletes, play baseball, basketball, and football. What is the most popular sport in Spain? Is it tennis, soccer, and do you think, because of resources? Uh, a lot of our athletes play basketball, football, and, and baseball. Do you think these numbers would change if our best athletes played tennis and had the resources to, to, to move up that pyramid? In Spain, the, the biggest sport is soccer, by far. Soccer and then the other ones. <laughs> and and uh, because it goes in the culture and so. Basket becomes important because it's very much follow and they are the only two professional sports in Spain cataloged from the ministry as a professional sports as soccer and basketball. Um, I believe here that um, we lose a lot of, of that talent in those years. That in those years that, 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 that those players they play soccer, basketball, baseball, all those things, um, there, is, there is a way to go on those sports. When once you start to specialize, I think that the, that the talent comes originally on the on the physical part. The three top sports that they have to develop a, a kid is uh, swimming, gymnastics, and athletics. Those are the three sports that they are. Everybody does when they are little. And then once you you have the base, you, that you can run, that you can do the things, and then you can start to specialize and then you go to specific sports and then you choose baseball you choose soccer like when you are eight nine years old you start to play more to more specific sports um, the problem with tennis is the repetitions that you need the hours yes or yes so and, and so the the um, the pathway in those sports and the number of hours for training in football when you are in in, in high school when you are in middle school is much better defined 
to be able to arrive to go to the draft and have the level. So the guys who arrive to the draft, they have the level to jump to the pros. The problem here is that there is not a draft, there is not a way to arrive with the level. Because the system is making the players arrive at 21, 22, 20 years old. Because it's, that is all demanding. So it's very difficult to change that. But the first change should be that the players in the early years, middle and high school, they should be able to work more, to play more hours. And, and, and then the general public, the general talent that you're talking about. Uh, if a gifted player like plays baseball, no? and goes there and he hits the ball and he does well, and then he goes and, uh, and plays soccer and he does well and he's in the team also, but then he goes, you give him a racket and he's the most gifted player in your class. And the gifted player, maybe he hit it better than the non-gifted, but he still needs the hours. So, and the gifted player says, no, I want to win. So I go to soccer, I go to basketball, because then I, I'm already good. I'm already competitive. I'm, no, I, I am stronger. So you will lose them, because in tennis, we, are, we need to teach better to keep those players. And that's where we lose them. And it's a problem, because for the middle schools, it's a problem of logistics, hours, number of hours for coaches. The tennis, in those years, is expensive. Not on, so much on the money, but it's very expensive on the hours. Because in the hours you need, you need a very good technical um, development to keep a, a, a talented player with you. Because you're going to have the other ones. It's not that they we do bad, it's just that there is not enough hours to be able to compete with soccer. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times uh, I, don't, I get those players that couldn't make the football team or the basketball and baseball, and the parents think we're going to make this player a great player, Mike. Well, they don't even have the genetics, or they don't put the hours in, you know, to, to be good. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think, first of all, the parents should decide which sport to do for, for to be really good. They should do it because it's good for the education. That's the first point. And when you are really good, and, and, and then that's you breaking the, the barriers, and then you can start to think, like to do something. You know? It's like a kid that then goes to, Sixth grade and that's very good in math and he's an A in math. He's not thinking he's going to be Bill Gates. He's, he knows he has to learn. So this is the same. Tennis is, we need to explain it better how tough and how difficult it is to arrive. So, but for, to do that, it's going to, you know, have to work more than in other sports. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So last question. Yeah. I, I'm just going to say that in some communities, you know, you have a lot of relevance when it comes to this. You know, it's still not a sport that is political as a relevant sport. Yeah. Well, he's saying that the, the tennis is not seen as a relevant sport. That's true. We, 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 we are smaller, but uh, we are what we are. So we can make it relevant. And we can make a step to make it more relevant in our small communities. And if you make it more relevant with your people and your community, and then the next community is going to do, look, they, they're doing well. And yesterday I visited this center here in Rome, and they have 60 courts here in Rome, in, in, in about two hours away. And I told them, wow, how come this? And I said, no, because there is a center in Mobile, and there is a center in North Carolina that they're doing this, and they're doing tournaments, and so so. So if the other one does it and is doing well, it becomes more relevant. And for the city of Rome, that center is becoming so relevant. Because most of the people going there for the tournaments, they go in hotels, eat food, and so on. So, so it's us to make it relevant in any one of the of the things that we talk. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.